We're going to talk about WoW for a bit. And whether or not people are playing Dragonflight. This will be a chance to talk a little bit more about how I'm going to play Dragonflight if it comes up. But I personally enjoy both of their content. Uh, so it, I was interested to see kind of what their reactions were to playing Dragonflight. And I had meant to watch Pyros. And then by the time I got a chance to, it looks like Zeppelin reacted as well. So I kind of saved it. Are you going to do it? Um, for those of you that don't know, I started playing WoW and Miss of Pandaria. And I played all through MOP, all through WAD, all wow. through Legion, um, all through BFA. He managed to play through all of WAD. I wonder, like, did you hear about Final Fantasy back then? Like, did 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 you hear about it back then? And then you're just like, oh, but I heard it flop. So I had heard about, um, I've been friends with Brian a lot longer than Final Fantasy 14 has been out. Um, and he had been telling me all about 1.0 and how awful it was. Uh, well, he didn't say how awful it was. He talked about how much he loved it. But when I looked for further information and I tried to verify that, it looked like I was going to have to give up a game that had a very large initial grind and was hard to get into that I was already over for a game that had a very large initial grind that I was not over. Uh, and that the large initial grind in Final Fantasy XIV was not really rewarding anything that World of Warcraft didn't already offer me. So there was just no reason to make the switch. Um, so I think like when you make the switch really varies for you. Um, so now they have the new expansion Dragonflight coming out. Yes. And I know that the story and everything has has expanded in some ways good, in some ways bad. With that being said, you're go we're going into Dragonflight now. Save and now they're going me. back to, uh, you know, we're getting some Galacron lore, which sounds really cool. Yeah, um, Galacron. Yeah. Some, uh, how the That's the biggest and baddest dragon. I know about that. Okay, Galacron was the huge asshole dragon. So there's a lot of really valuable narrative stuff happening. Now, from what I've heard, because I haven't been playing the game, I haven't kept up on it. A lot of a lot of this is being like found in like books and stuff in the game. So I must say, I'm really glad to hear that that these things are being elaborated on within the game, and that you guys aren't being forced to buy a twenty dollar, twenty five dollar, thirty dollar book to get this extra information. So I'm really happy to hear those kinds of developments happening for WoW. It's really cool to have supplemental, optional materials to dive deeper. It is incredibly infuriating to have those things locked behind a paywall. The core of the game is not only within Final Fantasy XIV, but is presented within the Final Fantasy XIV MSQ. The class quests elaborate, the raid quests elaborate, the lore books elaborate. If they want to release novels, it elaborates. If they want to have a live action television show, it elaborates. That's fine. But don't sit here and have big gaps and then hold that hostage somewhere else. Um, I'm just now getting into WoW lore. I'm starting with the books because that seems to be a dense thing. And what's actually really nice is I can consume it while I'm not in the game. But the idea that the things that are happening in those books wouldn't be presented in game, I find a really frustrating allegation. I, I can't back it up because what I'll tell you is right now I'm going through the books and the books are going along events that I remember doing the raids. I remember doing the campaign quests. I just never really, because I push escape and I don't read the text, if it's not voiced, I don't know it. But I, like part of me just assumes that if I did a good job clearing all the side quests and clicking on all the little pieces of paper that are around and clicking through all the little books that like I could get 60 or 80 percent of that in game because the idea that I can't is wildly infuriating. And there are multiple people telling me you can't, though, you can't, you can't, you can't, um, which if I get to that point and I go to try to consume this in game and I can't. I'm going to very quickly probably learn why those people are frustrated. Uh, for now, I just want to leave it like an allegation. That's all it is. I appreciate people letting me know that that's what's, what's being accused. And I can understand why that frustration would be there. Um, as I get further, but I'd like to go into the game with as open of a mind as possible, especially if they're getting better at it. I have a chance that if Dragonflight is presented well, why do I need to be upset? Like there's no benefit in me being upset about things that used to be wrong. Uh, if they fixed them, great, good on you. Uh, I feel the same about Final Fantasy XIV. Like, if there is something that's wrong with the game, and then they fix it, and then somebody downloads Final Fantasy XIV after the fix, then to that person, it should be perfect from day one. If the world can be better, then just let it be better. In the game this time. From what, I, from what I'm gathering here, I don't need to buy a book. 
uh, to have Christy Golden tell me what what's happening in the game. Uh, we'll we'll cool. know from the game what's Good. in the game. Um, in Vanilla WoW, the reason I was a story skipper is you just cleared quests, and it didn't really matter what quests you cleared. There were breadcrumb quests, and you could do the zones in any order. And so I can say that if there was a story to Vanilla WoW, it was not clear where you were supposed to be getting it. Fast forward to like Warlords of Draenor and Legion, there are these big campaign scenario quests where you get put in these moments that it is clearly trying to take you through an active gameplay experience television episode where it is telling these portions of the story. I don't know how well they tie to each other because I just played them as gameplay demos that had a story like Diablo has a story, but who cares? And it's fine. And I just did it as gameplay and it was taking place in an immersive world. And so I never had to ask like, why is there a dragon? Because they're like, the dragon is bad. Kill the dragon. And I'm like, great. And then we kill the dragon. And that's enough for me. That's enough. I just need to know bad guy, bad, good guy, good. Great. Gameplay. Kill it. Does he have loot? Yes. Awesome. And that's enough for me. As we go into Shadowlands, what I wish I'd known in hindsight is Shadowlands is a Final Fantasy XIV experience. It is a narrative experience. I'm not talking about quality. Once again, I don't know. But they are trying to tell the story. It was very clearly presented in the cinematics coming up to what the base tenets of the expansion were. Because it took place in this different realm, they had an opportunity to introduce each character as it meant. And you got woven through these zones in a specific order with little shield icons being mandatory campaign quests. Don't think they did a good job incorporating the dungeons because it felt like they tried to tell me the story of a dungeon and I'd already done the dungeon. And then there were other times where I hadn't done the dungeon yet. And so like... I. There's some elements about it that were clumsy, but I felt like they were trying to tell me something and that whether I wanted to pay attention or not, I was accidentally being force fed that. And that is substantially closer to Final Fantasy XIV that is rejoiced for its story. So the storytelling mechanic is almost identical. You can dispate on the quality of what's being shoved in the funnel, but the funnel has absolutely been taped inside your mouth and they are shoving lore inside of it. And that is incredibly infuriating when they say things like, it's going to be alt friendly. And then you go to click on an alt and you have to do this 30 minute ma slow walk through quicksand to put the helm in her. And then you're like, well, it was cool the first time to have to like slow walk with the helm. And then the second time I was like, well, that was kind of neat. Like what a reminder of what I went through on my main. And then the third time you're like, wow, they're really going to make me do this. And then by the 10th time, you're like, what the hell? Why am I still doing this? Imagine if you had to re-clear the Endwalker MSQ. You had to re-go through Thavnir and Garlevald every single time on every single class. And so those of you that are Omni 90, you did those zones 17 times? No, 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 no. Even with the escape key, that is unacceptable. And there are times in WoW where they, like a, a dialogue prompt pops up and says, you've done this before. Do you want to do it again? And you say no, and it fast forwards you to the end. But the fact that that is not a universal feature is insane. They've since gone back and fixed some of that, but like it should have been there from the get-go. But they were telling a story. So within Dragonflight, my expectations are that while I'm going to choose to engage in novel and the pre-patch event and watching all these videos and the legacy videos, that I should not have to. My expectation is that this is a reborn moment, that Shadowlands has been put, that has put World of Warcraft to bed, it is gone into the realm of the dead, and it is now going to be renewed. My understanding is they are turning a leaf, they are getting back to their roots, they're going back to talent trees, and they are ready for World of Warcraft to be reborn as World of Warcraft. And that from the get-go, they have an opportunity to tell a cohesive story. Now to answer the question, <laughs> am I coming back to Dragonflight? Um, I, I don't see myself doing that. Um, and again, that's not to spite anybody or anything. I genuinely want World of Warcraft to be good. Regardless of any effect or perceived effect that it could ever possibly have on Final Fantasy. I mean, I think that it could be better it could be good and that would i think that both of those things are intertwined like both of those things are interrelated i think it's easier to talk about the selfish thing right if you don't like wow why would you want wow to be better because it benefits all of mmorpgs and because anything that they discover that works or doesn't work might be something that Final Fantasy 14 devs look at and say okay would that work or not work for us
knowing that like obviously it's great that somebody who likes wow likes wow but like as a 14 fan it's also better for 14 that wow does well because it could help even if they say that for selfish reasons or whatever like oh maybe if that game is better then it'll have a positive impact on my game i think that's fine i mean i'll take it dude <laughs> i want wow to be good because i want the people who love world of warcraft to have an mmo that they can play that they love right period bottom line yeah, i don't true. care about okay. literally anything else true, yeah, and i feel fair. the same way okay. about final fantasy I, i'll be honest i think the the biggest uh temptation that i've had to actually return to wow is wrath of the lich king <laughs> Um, which is funny because sure. I'm not a person who played Wrath of the Lich King. I As did. I said earlier, I started it. That's a great reason to play, though. Because as somebody that raided like he did, I have to assume that his raid group, many of them had very, very fond memories of Wrath of the Lich King raiding. So there is no way that there was not some amazing moment in one of his raids and they go, the Wrath was better. Like, like so, like, what a great reason to go back. Uh, but I have a, a, a great friend who plays Wrath and is very, very, uh, you know, hooked into that. Good. Um, good. I'm really sad. I was invited to come back and be part of a raid group. I just didn't have time because I'm playing three other MMOs in addition to 14. Um, I thought about it. I thought about it. I did. I did for a, like a lot and more than once. Like it just kept kind of would bob into my brain. About Wrath because. Yeah. It's an easy game to invite people to. Some of you may have been invited. If you know somebody that's playing that game, you may have been invited. And I'm not talking like, oh, a WoW dev sent me like a gilded envelope. No, 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 no. Just somebody said, hey, you should come raid with me. A nice, casual invitation. Nice, casual invitation. You know somebody that's playing that you'd like to play games with. And they said, hey, I've been, uh, I've been playing rap. How you liking it? I'm liking it a lot. You wanna, uh, you wanna join me? A literal invitation. You just have to realize that they're two very different games. You know, they one are, is yeah. very narratively reinforced. They're very different. Mostly single player narrative for hundreds of hours. I wanna note that he loves the narrative element of this game and is already at 2000 hours in game and quoted the story at being 400 hours. That means for every hour of story that Pyromancer quotes to a new player that he has already put in an additional four hours into the game. People hold narrative up as the marquee item, and that's fine. It is absolutely what's on the billboard. But keep in mind that Pyromancer, somebody that most people know for his story playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV, who is proud of the story and calls it a narrative game because it is a narrative game, has already put four hours into this game for every hour that he quotes to a player about story. And one is is more, um, in, a, in a sense, more expansive in that it's uh, available through more mediums, uh, whether that's short stories or books or whatever. Like to actually get the full story of World of Warcraft, you have to seek externally. There is an idea in narrative that stories don't always start at the beginning and the middle's not always in the middle and the end is not always at the end. There are plenty of great movies that start with the end and then rewind. So, I think showing something that is without explanation and then playing through a series of events that can give that is a valid form of storytelling. I just think it's a very different experience. And it's it's just, it's so different that when people ask, you know, you coming back to WoW mm -hmm. and I say no, sometimes it feels like um, people take that as me saying that WoW is bad or that I hate WoW or that I don't want to go back yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. As, as, <laughs> yeah, you when don't I was feel pissed off a year and a half ago, uh, and I ranted about World of Warcraft, yeah, I was, uh, I was, you know, in a, in an emotional state then, so to speak. But and I just think that there are some fundamental changes about World of Warcraft that would have to occur for me to want to come back. Like what? I think I graphically wanted something more out of World of Warcraft for a while, but I know that it has a unique art. Maybe he could make the five things that would make him go back to WoW, and then she could react to that, and then he could react to her, and then I could react to them. That's kind of where I stand right now is just, um, you know, I hope WoW is good. I hope Dragonflight's good. I know pre-patch just came out and I hope you guys are enjoying it if you are playing it's today. that. It's um, today. I'm gonna play it. It's truth today. Truth be told, if you come to my stream and you ask about WoW lore, I'm actually like pretty likely to respond to, to you. Uh, if it's new stuff that I don't know anything about, obviously that may not be the case. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't want to upset anyone. I, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings or 
try to make one game seem like it's better than the other because i think again they're just they're just different games and um and i think that's the important thing to remember is that like these are people with hobbies and friends who play this game right like fido and chat's wedding party was entirely people they met in wow i have been to weddings of people that i met in wow i have been to conventions and stayed in bedrooms with bunk beds and the people that were in the other bed the other bunk bed in the room i only knew through world of warcraft but i really appreciate what mmos have offered me and i cannot wait for conventions to be starting back up this is awesome that they're coming back i'm super excited about fan fest again this isn't a wow versus final fantasy video this is a what does pyromancer want to play video um i assumed it would be more on what he would expect Final Fan World of Warcraft to have done and why it hasn't done it and that he wasn't going to play. It's really taken a completely different direction. He said he'll uh, try to compare them eventually. That's Pyromancer right there. I would love to see it. Like, he plays games differently than me. Uh, in some ways, we have a lot of overlap, but in other ways, we don't. And so I would love to see that. I would, I personally, just for myself, I would love to see it.